Okay, so we have learned that we can use this relatively simple equation to <coughs> estimate or to get an interval in which a population mean um, is expected to reside. Um, we can get with some confidence. Um, so we've shown a bit of the, the, the proof sketch with the derivation in the previous lectures. If you haven't seen them, you might want to go ahead and take a look at this. Um, I'm going to spend a few minutes asking another question. Given that we're trying to estimate a given um, population value, I want to know um, how big my sample has to be to reach a desired margin of error. Um, so that's the, the first thing you want to look at, or the main thing I think, for this brief session here. So given a desired margin of error, E, um, find the required sample size. So there's some intuition here in that if I really wanted to find the population mean, I need a sample size that's equivalent to the population, or, I need, or at least a huge, huge number of, of uh, elements in my sample size. So if I really wanted to eliminate and actually get the population mean, then I need my sample size to be exactly the population size. If that's the case, there's no error. It's zero error. Um, so the larger the sample size, the, um, the lower the margin of error. So the margin of error formula looks like this. We say that the margin of error is z for this particular critical value, or that's related to the margin of error. Um, and that alpha that we're talking about um, always corresponds to this area right there in blue. So if this is a 90% confidence interval that we're interested in, then if that's the case, then alpha is equal to 10%. If this is 95, then alpha is equal to 5%. So that's the connection um, that alpha has, both to our working visual model and our z-value. Um, so let's go ahead and just do a little bit of algebra on this and solve for n. Um, or solve for, yeah, let's solve for n. Um, so what I'm going to first try to do is get in in a numerator somewhere. So one way we could do that, I guess I could certainly square both sides right away just to remove the square root. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's, maybe let's do that. And if I square both sides, I get e squared, and then I get all of this squared. And when you're squaring factors, um, then you're squaring each individual element. So e squared is equal to z. I'll just well, we'll go ahead and put that in there. Alpha over 2, sigma squared, and then n. And then from here, what I'll do is just solve for n. I think we're at a point where I can just multiply both sides by n. And if I multiply both sides by n and divide, right, so whatever I do on the one side of the equation I have to do on the other, what that does for me is that it gets rid of an e squared. And so what I'm left with for the final answer is that n, the number of elements that I need to sample, 
is um, it's going to be c squared sigma squared all over e squared or just simply z sigma all over it's not square, they're going to square all of it at the same time. So that's the answer. Um, assuming that we know what uh, the standard deviation is for the population. Um, so we're taking those two here and then those givens, and we're looking to meet some desired margin of error this right here um, allows us um, to select allows us to select um, allows us to be able to select uh, the sample size and to achieve A desired margin of error. So let's take a quick look maybe at a at how we could use this formula. So an earlier example that we used um, was one where we said we was a sample of 49 test tubes and we're just going to determine how many times they can be heated up before they crack um, and we found that on average it was 1230 times they could be heated up before they cracked um, and so given that we have that sample we wanted to know what the confidence interval um, would be for the mean, um, the population. I mean, even though this is just a sample of some 49, we want to know for um, for the greater population um, how many times they can be heated up. And it's not 1230, it's a range because we don't have access to the population. So we get this interval and we have 95% um, percent confidence, or if we were to repeat this experiment 95% of the time, we'd find that the population value sits within the interval that we calculate. So that interval um, was 12.30 plus or minus 75.6. That means that they, um, we would have to, we could um, reheat 1,230 times plus or minus 75. Um, so that's, it's not a, there's a window there. 12.30 plus or minus 75. What if we want a tighter window? What if we want this margin of error to not be 75.6, but 1230 plus or minus 10? Right, that's our margin of error. We want to know within 10 heatings whether or not it's likely to crack. So many of these are made in some consistent manner. So that's what we're looking at. And this, so for this example, we're saying the margin of error that we're interested in is 12. Right? That allows us to get a little bit more precise um, as to the population mean. So it would be 12. So what we're shooting for is 1230 and then plus or minus 12. And so to do that, we need to know um, how many samples we need. Um, so I'm just going to plug the information in for that problem. Um, so let's grab, let's go back up and grab um, some of the specifics for that problem that we started out with. Uh, I think it's here. 
So it was a 95% confidence. So I know that that Z value is 1.96. Okay, so Z alpha over 2 is 1.96. And sigma was 270. So 1.96 and sigma is 270. So um, Z is 1.96 and sigma is 270. So if I plug those values in, we have 1.96. Um, and then sigma is 270. And the margin of error that we're interested in is 12. And so let's plug those values in and see what we get. Um, 196. Times 270 divided by 12 is 44.10 squared. So if I take that value and square it, um, that is 90. Is that 19 million? 19 million. 448,000. Um, so it's going to take quite a few. So sometimes it's not always feasible um, to achieve the margins of error that you might want to achieve. So, but as a sanity check, let's see if I use the previous numbers um, to spare that was there in the original problem. So if I take a quick look at that, that margin of error was 75.6. Um, so if I try that 75.6, it should give me um, the same 49 test tubes, um, same number that we had in our sample. Um, it was that not 49, but the 75.6. So punching those numbers into our calculator, the 1.96 times 270 divided by 75.6 gives us a 7. And we square that and get 49. Um, so that squares up with the original problem of our 49 test tubes and the given margin of error that we um, came up with. Um, so the logic is, is consistent here. So for this particular problem, to get a margin of error of 12, we need 19 million. Um, let's try another one. Um, the previous one that we did earlier, we looked at um, the average. We wanted to estimate. We wanted to figure out a confidence interval for the population of, um, of folks who got ticket, ticketed, their average speed. Um, so for this particular sample of 90, the average speed is 66.2. For the population as a whole, um, what would be that confidence interval? And we worked through this previously, estimated the year at 95%. And we came up with a confidence interval um, here of 0.702. And so um, 66 miles per hour. 
plus or minus 0.7. So what if I wanted to narrow that even further? What if instead of a margin of error of 0.7, let's say I want to take it down to 0.5. How many would I need in my sample to have 95% confidence um, that the population values within that, that interval, where it's 66.2 plus or minus 0.5. So let's use these numbers here. Um, we're going to use um, let's see, ninety-five percent. We have um, we have the standard deviation that was three point four. So for this. Example here, the margin of error is it, um, and this is for um, ticket tape drivers. Um, example. So what we know is that to hit my buzz, uh, flip the values into Z, subscript out um, times the standard deviation for the population divided by the desired margin of error, and then we'll square that number. The confidence interval that we had looked at and used for our original margin of error was 95%. And so that gave us our one. Remember, we need fit with alpha equals uh, 95%, being 95%. What's left over is 5%. So each one of these is 2.5%, and we would use inverse norm. You see that alpha over 2 equals inverse norm at 0 0.025. And then there's a examples on how to get that Z, that critical value of Z. So that's how I came up with the 1.96 standard deviation. Um, for that one was 3.4. Margin of error we're interested in is 0 0.5. Um, don't forget that originally, in that sample, the original problem, um, we will plot the margin of error um, was 0 0.702. Um, we're trying to just bring that margin of error down to 0.5. So if I put these numbers in, and then square them, I'll get the desired sample size. So it's going to be 1.96 times 3.4 divided by 0.5. Thirteen point three two eight, and then square that. We get one seventy seven point six. One hundred and seventy seven point six. Now, um, the samples are discrete values. You can't sample half a car, half a speeding ticket. So you have to choose a number. It's going to be 177, or it's going to be 178. And so since we're trying to um, better or hit that margin of error, the greater the sample size, the greater the margin of error. 
So, what you want to do um, with this is round up. Um, so, we're going to use what we call the ceiling function, which says round up to the next integer. Right? So, that square kind of ceiling um, is, you know, even if it's 0 0.0, let's say it's 10.0001, you round up to the next integer and you get 11. If it's 10.99, round up to the next integer, you get 11. So it's always rounding up to the next integer. It's a particular way of rounding. So the correction to the final kind of correction to that formula is not only do we have these values in here, but we're going to um, take those values and then round up to next integer. So you're going to take the ceiling, so if that amounts to. So for the previous example, when we had a margin at error 0 0.5, um, for this one, and for that margin of error of 0.5, we ended up with the was generated from the 90 um, individuals that were sampled. To increase the margin of error by 0.2, um, right, margin of error was 0.5, oops, previous margin of error, I'm sorry, let's go back, previous margin of error was 0.7, and it took 90 to get that, to increase it, to better it by from 0.7 to 0.2, from 0.702 to 0.5, um, required that instead of working with 90, we had to actually work with nearly twice as much for that small increase, um, uh, or for that small um, betterment or smaller window smaller interval or margin of error window. So that's the final formula.